want to talk about the Cold War and how it got worse during the 50s. We had a senator from Wisconsin named Joseph McCarthy who began to make out crazy statements about how many governments, how many communists worked in the government and in Hollywood and in colleges. And the government really did nothing about him. America was so frightened about the communists, they believed him. Um, this was called the McCarthy era, and there you see him on the right. McCarthyism is a term still used today. McCarthyism is when you use baseless claims, claims that have no merit, and charges that can't be proved to gain power and influence. And uh, he was accusing everybody of being communist, and people in government and Hollywood and the colleges were losing their jobs because of it. Um, most people didn't oppose him because if you opposed him, you were a communist. Um, it finally came to a head during the Army McCarthy hearings. This is when he accused the Army of being full of communists. Um, and the government decided to put these, the Senate decided to put these hearings on TV so people could see who they were dealing with. And most people saw him for what he was, a blowhard, uh, full of hot air, and a, and a bully. And his power sort of collapsed after that. Um, next slide. In the 50s, when President Eisenhower got elected, um, he didn't send help to the countries that revolted against Soviet rule. And these were Hungary and Poland and East Germany. All the rebellions in those three countries that were controlled by the Soviets were crushed by the Soviets. Um, but really, it shouldn't have been a surprise to anybody in the world because for us, this was just a continuation of the policy of containment, containing communism where it was, and it wasn't Hungary, Poland, and East Germany, and not allowing it to grow. Now, he would face it in other places like Korea. Next slide. Uh, Jews left Europe after World War II. They did not feel welcome there. Um, and they returned to what was their biblical homeland, their homeland from the Torah or the Bible in the Middle East. And this was Palestine, which was then controlled by the British. Uh, what you can see is today Israel. Uh, you can see what was in large part Palestine in the middle map and what was narrowed down to Israel in the second map because the UN divided Palestine into a Jewish state, which would be known as Israel, and a separate region for Arabs, which included the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. The surrounding Arab countries were so unhappy about Israel being plopped down by the United Nations in the middle of their area that they attacked Israel, teeny tiny little Israel. Because um, remember, for hundreds and hundreds of years, after the diaspora of or the scattering of the Israeli people, the Arabs have lived there. The Ar Israel is really the homeland of both Arabs and Palestinians, and the Palestinians did not like the fact that that the Arabs, who were Palestinians, were forced to move out of their area. This caused a war which Israel won, surprisingly. They were surrounded by their enemies, but they still won this war. Next slide. Oh, not next slide. Um, the U.S. supported Israel, and we still do today. The Soviet Union supported uh, many of the Arab states. Um, they don't really support that many Arab states today. We were really afraid that... Um, the Arab states were going to go communist and wouldn't be able to get our gas from them. Next slide. So, in the Middle East, we helped overthrow the government of Iran and replaced their elected government with a pro-U.S. government led by a guy named the Shah of Iran who would eventually get overthrown by his own people. There he is, all dressed up. I think he's so short his feet don't touch the ground there. In Egypt, uh, they wanted help to modernize. We wouldn't help them, so they turned to the Soviets. The United States and England kind of blockaded Egypt and cut off that help from the Soviets. Um, and even though the United States got a guarantee from the French and the English in that area that they wouldn't take control of the very important Suez Canal, which you can see here is the uh, connecting point without going around Africa to, from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean, they had promised us they wouldn't take over the Suez Canal, and they did. Soviets made threats. You know what? We're going to stop here. <laughs>